Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to uh, lecture 12th of module 3 of the course called Game Theory and Economics. Uh, before we start this uh, today's lecture, uh, let me uh, briefly recapitulate what we have been do doing so far. Uh, what we have been doing is that we have been uh, discussing the application of Nash equilibrium in uh, auctions. Uh, the first kind of auctions that we have discussed so far is uh, what is known as the English auction. also called the second price sealed bid auction. So, that was uh, what we have discussed uh, before. We have seen that there are infinite number of Nash equilibria in second price sealed bid auction. Uh, what we shall start discussing today is what is known as Dutch auction or so the difference of this auction with the second price silvid auction is that in this auction uh, the price that the winner gets of the auction is not the second price second highest price but the first price that is the price that he is quoting is going to be the price that he is paying for the good so uh, in why is it called the Dutch auction? What is what happens in uh, uh, or, or what, what used to happen in Holland in many cases is that price is to come down from before uh, from above and when it comes down from above <coughs> auction prices whenever the auctioneer finds at least one person who is ready to pay that price that person uh, gets the good and paying that price. So, here the second highest price it does not matter for this auction and the, the person who is ready to get the good is going to pay the price which is the highest price not the second highest price and that is why it is called the first uh, price seal bid auction. So, in terms of <coughs> our language in terms of game theory uh, it can be represented as the following. And finally, preferences of the players here a, a difference will come compared to the second price auction. Uh, when a person gets the commodity, it is given by his valuation for the commodity minus B i if A. or
So, if I is getting the commodity, then he is uh, getting a valuation of VI, which is, which is how he values the commodity. And from this, we have to subtract the uh, price that he is paying, which is, which is BI. Uh, it is not the second highest price, it is the price that he is quoting. And this will happen in two circumstances. One is if uh, his bidding, that is BI, is strictly greater than the highest bidding of other players, which is B bar. Uh, and if it can also happen, VI minus BI can also happen, if person I's bidding is same as the bidding of other players, highest bidding of other players, but person I's index, that is I, is lower than those players who have submitted B bar. And 0 otherwise. So, uh, if the, the bidding of this player is less than B bar of it or it is equal to B bar, but index of other players are less than I, then person I does not get the commodity and he gets a payoff of 0. So, this is the setting. <coughs> Now, let us look at what kind of Nash equilibrium that uh, can be obtained from this setting. Uh, let us look at the following biddings. Uh, this was a Nash equilibrium in the second price auction. But notice this cannot be a Nash equilibrium here because what will happen is that uh, in this case player 1 is getting the object by bidding V1 his valuation and every other player is bidding his uh, own valuation. But player 1 can still get the object if he reduces his bidding from V1 to V2. And in that case, his uh, payoff is going to go up. His payoff is going to go up to V1 minus V2, whereas presently he is getting V1 minus V1, which is 0. So, uh, this is not a Nash equilibrium in this setting. Uh, what can be a Nash equilibrium? Let us take the following. This is a Nash equilibrium. Uh, what is happening is that player 1 and player 2 both are submitting uh, bits which are equal to V1 and other bits are less than V1 because we know that V3, V4, etc., etc. are less than V1. So, player 1 here is also getting the object and he is getting a payoff of 0. Uh, if he deviates, if player 1 deviates and bids something more. Uh, suppose he bids B1 which is greater than V1, then payoff is going to be V1 minus V1 which is less than 0, whereas presently he is getting uh, 0. So, by deviating upwards that is bidding something more, he is uh, strictly worse off. If he bids something less, he will lose the object he is not going to get the object and so if he loses the object it, his payoff becomes a 0. So, he is not better off. Uh, therefore, this is a Nash equilibrium. This is I have not specified the, uh, the calculations of other players, but it will be a Nash equilibrium for the following reason that Right now, other players are not getting any payoff, they are getting 0 payoff. Now, if they want to get the object, then they will have to outbid player 1. But if they outbid player 1, then the price that they will be quoting will be more than V1, uh, which is more than their individual valuations. 
And if this, if this is more than your individual valuation, then you are making a negative payoff, which means that by trying to get the object, they are going to get a negative payoff. Otherwise, if they do not get the object, their payoff remains zero, whatever they bid. So, from other players point of view also, deviation is not profitable and hence this is a Nash equilibrium. Um, one interesting characteristic of this first price sale bid auction is that in the Nash equilibrium, layer 1 will definitely get the object. Notice this was not the case in case of uh, uh, second price of second price sale bid auction. There it could happen that other players are also getting the object. And uh, the reason is the following that uh, uh, player 1 if he does not get the object, it must be the case that someone else is getting the object. So, let us call that someone to be I. And if I is getting the object, then it must happen that B I is greater than B 1. Now, if B i is uh, greater than B 1, then uh, it can happen in two cases, B i is greater than equal to V 1, because I do not know exactly the value of B 1. So, there are two cases, one is B i is greater than equal to V 1 or P i is less than V 1, these are the only two possibilities. Now, if B i is greater than or equal to V 1, then the player i who is getting the object is making a negative payoff, because his valuation is V i which is less than V 1. So, he is getting the object, but his valuation is uh, minus of B i minus V i which is a negative quantity and he can do better by uh, by setting B i is equal to V i in which case he will get 0. So, this is not a Nash equilibrium. The other possibility is that B i is less than V 1. Now, can this be a Nash equilibrium? If B i is less than V 1, uh, this is not a Nash equilibrium for the following reason. In this case, player 1 can always outbid uh, player i, because his valuation v i is v i. So, he can always afford to bid something which is more than b i, uh, but less than uh, v 1. In fact, he can bid equal to b i and get the object, because the tie breaking rule is that uh, player 1 gets the object if he ties with someone else. So, again, so this is this cannot be a Nash equilibrium, because in this case B 1 will be equal to B i or more than B i and which means that player 1 will, will get the object. So, player i cannot get the object in this case also. So, we are left with the possibility that in Nash equilibrium player 1 always gets the object. There is another interesting property of Nash equilibrium in first price auction, which will be presented in terms of an exercise. Uh, it is the following. Uh, this is the exercise. <coughs> in a Nash equilibrium of first price sale bid auction, show that the two highest bids are the same. One of these bids is submitted by player 1 
and the highest bit is at least V2 and at most V1. Show also that any action profile satisfying these conditions is a Nash equilibrium. So, <coughs> what we are required to show is the following. What is being said is that if you have If you have Nash equilibrium, then this Nash equilibrium must satisfy some characteristics. Let us call these characteristics as A and what are these characteristics? How is A described? A will be specifying an action profile where the bits are suppose B1, B2, Bn, where B1 is equal to Bi for i is equal to 2 or 3 or 4 etcetera etcetera or n and these two that is b1 is greater than bj for j 2 and j is not equal to i. So, this is what is being said and another uh, part of this A is that B1 is greater than equal to V2 but less than equal to V1. So, this is how A is described. A is describing some property of the of a particular kind of profiles. In these profiles, <coughs> player 1 is making the highest bit and his bit is matching with the bit of another person, at least uh, another one person, just one person. And we can in fact say that it can be possible that more than one person is bidding the same as uh, player 1. Uh, so, B1 is equal to Bi where I can be 2 or 3 etc etc or n and bits of other players, other players means player 1 and beside player 1 and player i, the bits of other players we call it Bj, those bits will be less than B1. And uh, finally, we have this char important characteristic that the highest bit that B1 must be lying between two bounds. Its lower bound is given by V2 and the upper bound is given by V1. So, we have to show that if I have Nash equilibrium, then that Nash equilibrium must satisfy uh, this, this characteristic A. Now, uh, if I have to show that Nash equilibrium satisfies A, then I can show the same thing by showing that not A implies not Nash equilibrium. That is, if I do not have satisfaction of A, then I do not have Nash equilibrium. That will guarantee me that Nash equilibrium is implying A. Uh, this comes from the uh, fundamental mathematical logic that suppose A is sufficient for B, then B is necessary for A. So, uh, we have to show that if A is not satisfied, that some of the this uh, three characteristics are not satisfied, then we will not have Nash equilibrium. 
So, suppose uh, this is not satisfied that uh, the, the bidding of player 1 is not equal to the highest bid of other players if this is not satisfied. Now, if this is not satisfied, then obviously this is not Nash equilibrium. Uh, this is for the reason that uh, in that case, player 1 will lower his bit and bid equal to B1 because his payoff is given by V1 minus B1 as B1 declines his payoff rises. So, uh, he will always like to bid as little as possible. So, this is E1. Hence, uh, if this is not satisfied, we do not have Nash equilibrium. Uh, player 1 will have profitable deviation. Uh, what is the other characteristic that must be satisfied? That this highest payoff must be greater than the other uh, bits. This is very is easy, we, we have seen this before. We have proved this before. If uh, some other player is bidding more than B1, then that player will get the object and which we have just proved that cannot happen. In Nash equilibrium, player 1 must get the object. So, no further uh, elaboration is required for this point. The third point is this. If this is not satisfied, if this is not satisfied, then what happens? Which means that there are two possibilities. V1 is strictly less than V2. Now, if B1 is uh, less than V2, then that cannot be a Nash equilibrium because other players, uh, for example, player 2 player 2 will in that case outbid player 1 and get the object and as long as his bid is less than V2, uh, he will make a positive payoff which he is not getting here because I know that uh, in Nash equilibrium, so far the Nash equilibrium that we have considered, player 1 is getting the object. So, player 2's payoff is 0. So, he can better his payoff by bidding more than uh, player 1's bidding which is B1 and get the object, make a positive payoff. So, the player 2 will have a profitable deviation in this case. If B1 is greater than V1, is that a Nash equilibrium? Again, the answer is no because here player 1 is getting the object, but he is making a negative payoff. So, that is not good for him. So, he can at least bid to uh, B1 is equal to V1 and uh, that will give him 0 payoff. So, uh, again, so from here also there is profitable division for player 1. So, we have basically shown that if these conditions of A are not satisfied, then we do not get Nash equilibrium, which means that Nash equilibrium implies A. The other part is this. Uh, which is it is written in the question itself that any profile satisfying A is Nash equilibrium. So, we have to show that A implies Nash equilibrium. 
and uh, this is not very difficult to show. So, any profile satisfying these characteristics is a Nash equilibrium. This is true because uh, look at the profit possible deviation of any player. In this case player 1 is getting the object, either he is getting a 0 payoff or he is getting a positive payoff. If he is getting a 0 payoff which means that B1 is equal to V1. Uh, from this if he bets more then uh, he is going to get the object but his payoff is going to turn into negative. So, that is not good for him uh, because right now he is getting 0 payoff from 0 to negative is bad. If he bets less then he is not going to get the object uh, which means that his payoff remains 0. So, deviation for player 1 is not profitable. This is the case where B1 is equal to V1. If B1 is less than V1, the player is making player 1 is making positive payoff. If he raises, if he raises his bet, uh, he is still getting the object, but his payoff is going to go down because the payoff is given by V1 minus B1. If he reduces the bid, he is going to lose the object, so payoff becomes neg uh, 0, which is worse than a positive payoff. So, uh, division by player 1 is not profitable. For the other players, <coughs> any player, it may be 2 or 3, any player, if they want to change the outcome by bidding more than player 1, they are going to get the object, but as we have seen before, the payoff is going to turn to negative. Uh, right now, they are getting 0 payoff, so that is not good. If they beat something less, then they are still not getting the object. So, outcome does not change and so payoff remains zero. Hence, uh, deviation by other players is not profitable. So, this any, any profile which is satisfying this set of characteristics is going to be a Nash equilibrium. So, therefore, we have proved this that A implies any. So, unlike what is the moral of the story? Moral of the story is that unlike uh, second price auction, first price auction has the equilibrium in first price auction uh, has some definite characteristics uh, and uh, this characteristics basically uh, bound the equilibria uh, into some, some limits. They are not as, uh, as wide uh, as in the case of second price auction. They cannot be anything, they have to satisfy some, some characteristics. Now, in second price auction, we saw that there are some other characteristics. Uh, for example, VI weekly dominates other actions of I. So, this was uh, second price. Now, one may wonder if this property hold for first price auction also. So, is it the case in first price auction does V i weekly dominate other actions? And it turns out that some of the actions are weakly dominated by V i. So, suppose this is V i and I am considering B i which is greater than V i. Then uh, one can see that a V i weakly dominates any action which is greater than V i. Uh, this is because it depends where B bar is. If B bar is here, 
uh, then bidding V i gives you 0 payoff, bidding B i gives you negative payoff. So, u i is equal to 0 if V i is bid and is equal to negative of So, uh, so in this case, uh, if b bar is less than v i, then uh, it is better v i is a better action than b i. If b bar lies here, uh, then by bidding b i you are getting the object, but your payoff remains at this value which is negative. Whereas, by bidding V i you are not getting the object, so your value your payoff is 0. If B bar is here greater than B i, then uh, both the bids that V i and B i gives you uh, give you a 0 payoff because you are not getting the object. So, the player is indifferent. So, we see that considering all possible cases we see that uh, bidding VI is either better or it gives you the same payoff as uh, bidding BI. Therefore, VI weakly dominates BI. But is that uh, true for for any action which is less than VI? And the answer is no. So, if BI is less than VI, in this case, what is important to see is that by bidding VI you will always get 0 payoff in case of uh, first price auction because uh, what you are if you get the object your payoff is vi minus bi and bi is equal to vi so your payoff is 0 if you do not get the object obviously your payoff is 0 so by bidding vi you are always going to get 0 but by bidding bi can you do better and the answer is yes suppose b bar is here less than bi then by bidding bi you are going to get vi minus bi which is positive. So, there are cases where bi is better than vi and uh, if b bar is here then by bidding bi you are not getting the object. So, your payoff is 0, but we have seen already that by bidding vi also the payoff is always 0 and same logic holds if b bar is greater than v i. In this case, in both b i and v i, the payoff uh, is 0. So, in some cases bidding b i is better than bidding v i and in other cases uh, they are same as far as payoff is concerned. So, if b i is less than v i, b i weakly dominates V i. So, any uh, action which is less than the valuation of the person uh, is, a is a weakly dominating action compared to the valuation of that person. And this implies if I put these two things together that uh, any action which is greater than the valuation is weakly dominated any action which is equal to the valuation is also weakly dominated. We have seen this here. Uh, it means that in Nash equilibrium, 
which satisfies this characteristic, remember? This characteristic, which means that in Nash equilibrium, action of at least one player is weakly dominated. One is basically talking about this action. Uh, I know that there is at least one player who is taking the action B i and I know that B i is going to be greater than or equal to V 2. Uh, even if it is equal to V2 and if I is equal to 2, that is player 2 is taking this action. Uh, even then we have seen that V2 for player 2 is a weakly dominated action, which means that in that case also the uh, one action is there in the equilibrium profile which is weakly dominated. And if you, obviously if Bi is greater than V2 then uh, that is going to be weakly dominated. Now, uh, this is true, but this is true if we consider only in the uh, only the cases where we have continuous variables. If we do not have continuous variable, if the variables are discrete, which means that the, the, there are some units of the variables below which the, the we cannot divide the variables. In that case, however, we can have equilibrium in which uh, nobody's action is weakly dominated. Uh, I can give you the example in the following sense that suppose epsilon is the lowest unit, discrete unit and uh, in that case what is a Nash equilibrium. What is one example of a Nash equilibrium? I can take the following Nash equilibrium. <clears throat> so, here epsilon is the a smallest unit in which uh, these valuations can be divided into. By the way, this is a wrong spelling. And uh, here, player one is bidding v two minus epsilon. Player 2 is also bidding V2 minus epsilon and other players are bidding B3, B4, etc., where Bj suppose is less than equal to Vj minus epsilon for J greater than 2. So, for other players, they are bidding. Uh, something either equal to v j minus epsilon or less than that. Now, I am claiming that this is a Nash equilibrium. Uh, why this is a Nash equilibrium? Because uh, here player 1 is getting the object as we already, already know that must happen in Nash equilibrium. But uh, player 2 is bidding same uh, as player 1 if player 2 bids a little bit more, then he will get the object. If he bids v2, he will get the object. But if he bids v2, his payoff remains at uh, uh, v2 minus uh, 
v2 which is equal to 0. Right now also he is getting a 0 pair by not getting the object. So, by deviating pair 2 is not bet better off. Uh, if he deviates to some less value then obviously he is not getting the object still and uh, so his payoff remains at 0. A uh, player 1 will ob obviously not deviate, he is getting a positive payoff. If he bids more, he still gets the object and the payoff goes down. If he bids less, his payoff becomes 0. And other players will, if they change the outcome, then they get negative payoff. If they do not change the outcome, their payoff remains 0. <coughs> so, this is Nash equilibrium, but look what is interesting in this Nash equilibrium is that everyone is bidding less than his valuation for the object. And if everyone is bidding uh, less than the valuation, then the actions are not weakly dominated because we, we have seen that those actions which are equal to or more than the valuations are weakly dominated, not actions which are less than the valuation. So, this is an action, this is a profile where nobody's action is weakly dominated. And if epsilon goes to 0, then this profile approaches V2 it approaches this and in this uh, equilibrium player 1 still gets the object pays v2 and uh, remember this equilibrium is similar to other equilibrium in the first in the second price auction this in the sense that in that auction in this profile also in second price auction player 1 is getting the object and he is paying a price which is equal to v2. Uh, so, as far as the amount of money which is collected from the auction is concerned these two profiles this is in first price and this is in second price are known as revenue equivalent. They both of them are giving the same revenue to the auctioneer. And another similarity between these two profiles, actually equilibrium profiles is that in both these profiles action of no one is weakly dominated. So, so, these two profiles are called distinguished equilibria. Let us do one exercise which extends our uh, first price and second price into what is known as third price auction. Consider its third price sealed bid auction which differs from first and second price auctions uh, only in that the winner that is the person who submits the highest bid pays the third highest price, price. There are at least three players. Now the things that we have to answer is the following are the following. One is that show that for any player i bit v i weakly dominates any lower bit, but does not weakly dominate any higher bit. Secondly, show that the action profile in which each player bits are valuation is not a Nash equilibrium. And thirdly, find a Nash equilibrium. So, the questions that we have to answer firstly b i less than v i 
is weakly dominated by V i. This we have to prove. So, this is more or less it, uh, this is the end of the lecture for today. Uh, before we wrap up, what are the things that we have discussed? We have looked into the various aspects of the first price uh, sealed bid auction. We have seen that first price sealed bid auction satisfies many interesting properties. In equilibrium player 1 always gets the object, uh, in equilibrium 2 bids must be same, one of them is player 1's. Uh, and uh, also we have seen that uh, this Nash equilibrium, if we take continuous variables, will not have, will have uh, at least one action which is weakly dominated. And if we do not take continuous variables, if we take discrete variables, it is possible to find Nash equilibrium in which the actions are not weakly dominated. Thank you. How many Nash equilibria are there in first price sealed bid auction? Give some examples. So, uh, the answer to the question is that there are infinite number of Nash equilibria in first price sealed bid auction. And uh, the, we were, su were supposed to give some examples, examples of such Nash equilibria. For example, suppose uh, B1, B2, Bn, these are the bits. So, suppose player 1 is uh, bidding same as his valuation B1, player 2 is bidding the same thing and the other players are bidding their own valuation. Now, my claim is that this is a Nash equilibrium. Uh, the reason is that we have to check whether players can deviate and be better off. Here uh, one's payoff in equilibrium is given by v 1 minus v 1 which is equal to 0. So, he is not getting anything though he is getting the object. Similarly, 2's payoff he is not getting the object and other players none of them uh, are getting the object. So, their payoff is 0. So, the question is can someone deviate and earn a positive payoff? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, for example, player 1 player 1 can deviate and bid something more than v 1, but remember if I bid more than uh, v 1, I will definitely get the object, but my payoff will it turn out to be this which is negative. So, it is uh, uh, not good in my interest to bid more than v 1. If I bid less than v 1. <coughs> in that case, I am not getting the object, player 2 will get the object uh, uh, and if player 2 gets the object, he will get something I do not know, but I am not getting the object, but I am not better off either. So, here this is 0, which was the same thing that I was getting earlier in the equilibrium. So, uh, this is an equilibrium indeed for player 1, uh, at least player 1 cannot deviate and be better off. Similarly, for other players also, if they have to get the object, they have to bid more than v 1 and if they uh, bid more than v 1, then their payoff becomes negative. So, uh, from Nan's point of view, this is any profitable division is possible. Another example we can give is the following. take this uh, or let us say 
this this change make it more interesting because otherwise the payoff of the first pair will be same as the payoff of the first pair in the previous equilibrium that we cited here uh, what is happening is that player 1 will again get the object but and his payoff will be v1 minus v2 which is positive so he is now getting a positive payoff uh, can he be better off well uh, he can bid more than v2 but then his payoff falls if he bids something less than v2 he loses the object which is strictly bad so uh, deviation by player 2 player 1 is not profitable for player 2 uh, if he has to get the object he has to bid more than v2 uh, which means that his payoff will turn out to be negative which is worse than getting 0 for the other players also same logic applies so this is an equilibrium second question in the equilibrium of the first by seal bid auction action of at least one uh, at least one this should be at least one bid is weakly dominated explain now uh, property interesting property of Nash equilibrium <coughs> in the uh, first price auction is that the first two bids highest bids will be equal and between v1 and v2 so we have here v1 and here v2 so the first two highest bits must be somewhere here now we have another property of this uh, first price auction that bidding more than one's valuation or bidding equal to one's valuation is weakly dominated so if we have such equilibrium here uh, then at least one player who uh, coming from this set that is player 2 3 etc etc n at least one of them is bidding more than his or her, or her valuation in this range and that action we know is weakly dominated so therefore in every equilibrium uh, in first price auction at least one player's action is weakly dominated so that is the meaning of the statement thank you Thank you.